Welcome to The Explainer. Today, we're going to unpack a story that shows how some of the biggest decisions in tech aren't always made in a boardroom. Sometimes they happen, well, by complete accident, born out of a little bit of frustration and a whole lot of necessity. So this one sentence from a really experienced engineer is where our whole story kicks off. You know, it seems like such a simple thing to say, but it actually captures this huge shift that's happening just under the surface in the IT world. It's the kind of change that doesn't really make headlines, but it fundamentally changes how businesses get things done. All right, let's dive into that. I mean, really, how does a veteran, someone who has spent years and years mastering and managing these complex Citrix and Zen server setups, just find himself reluctantly trying something brand new? So you've got this guy who spent years expertly managing his company's entire infrastructure, and suddenly, the rug gets pulled out from under him. But here's the thing, it wasn't because of performance issues or bugs or missing features. His trusted platform was working just fine. The problem? It came from a totally different direction. Yep, it was politics. A classic case of a decision being made way, way up the chain with almost no regard for what it would mean for the people on the ground. This move forced our engineer to just abandon the very platform he'd built his career on, and it left him scrambling to find a solution, and fast. Okay, so now he's in a real bind. He's facing this tight deadline, tons of pressure, and he spins up Proxmox. This wasn't a choice he made because he was curious or wanted to experiment. It was pure necessity. He was totally expecting a rough, you know, unpolished experience, just a temporary fix to get by. But then, something really strange happened. See, instead of all the problems he was braced for, he found the complete opposite. These key enterprise features, the stuff he thought would be a massive headache, they just worked, seamlessly, right out of the box. The command line interface was clean, it was powerful. GPU pass-through, which can be notoriously tricky, just worked, no drama. And setting up virtual machines in a clustered environment was surprisingly smooth. It wasn't just usable, it was actually enjoyable. And what's so interesting is that this guy's surprise discovery, it's not some one-off thing. This exact story has been playing out for over a decade in server rooms and home labs everywhere. Longtime users have watched Proxmox grow up from its early days into this incredibly robust platform, and it's been consistently delivering without all the fanfare of its big arrivals. So this one engineer's personal story, it's really just a tiny piece of a much, much bigger narrative. And that narrative is driven by one of the most powerful forces in business, money. Specifically, the spiraling, just mind-boggling costs of traditional enterprise software licensing. One person in the discussion actually put a number on it, a big one, half a million euros. But here's the kicker. The crucial point isn't just the price tag, it's what that money is really buying. And it's not just the software, it's something else entirely. And this comment right here, man, it just nails the core issue. It's that old saying, no one ever got fired for buying IBM. A lot of companies, they aren't paying for a better product. They're paying for a safety net. They're paying for a vendor they can point the finger at when things inevitably go wrong. It's basically an insurance policy written in software licenses. And when you start thinking like that, you realize this whole money thing, it reveals this deep, fundamental, cultural divide in the IT world. It's a clash between two totally different philosophies about how technology should be managed in the first place. And you can really see the two sides of that divide right here. You've got the traditional enterprise way on one side, a culture built on depending on your vendor, clicking through GUI wizards, and having layers and layers of support contracts. And then you have the Proxmox ethos, a community built on being self-reliant, having a powerful command line, and believing that if something breaks, you can, and you should, be able to fix it yourself. This right here, this simple statement, Proxmox is just Linux, it really gets to the absolute heart of the matter. Companies all over the world already trust Linux to run their most critical servers. I mean, it's the backbone of the internet. So you have to ask, right, why is there any hesitation to trust it for virtualization? It's the same tough, battle-tested foundation just being used for a different job. Okay, but of course this whole conversation brings up the biggest, most valid question you could possibly ask from that enterprise perspective. It's the one that keeps managers up at night, and honestly, it's a fair concern. I mean, it's the critical question, isn't it? When you have multi-million dollar operations on the line and all your systems are down, is a community forum really going to be enough? You need a lifeline, right? You need a phone number to call where someone is contractually obligated to pick up and solve your problem. And look, this is a totally fair criticism. 
the big established players have spent decades building these deeply entrenched multi-tiered support systems. They have playbooks, service level agreements, and super clear escalation paths. And that's a system that Proxmox, even with its own paid support options, really doesn't try to replicate in the same way. But maybe, maybe that's the whole point. Maybe the Proxmox model isn't about buying into layers of corporate red tape and support tickets. Maybe it's about investing in your own team, trusting their skills, and giving them a powerful tool that gives them direct, transparent control over everything. So let's go back to our engineer for a second. His journey didn't start with some glossy brochure or a slick sales pitch that landed in his inbox. There was zero marketing involved here. And he definitely wasn't won over by a sales rep at some fancy steakhouse lunch. There was no expensive campaign designed to convince him how great the product was. The product was going to have to speak for itself. Nope. In the end, it was way, way simpler than that. He was under pressure, he had a serious problem, and he needed a solution. And Proxmox just, well, it delivered. It worked quietly, it worked effectively, and it did it without any fuss. It just solved the problem. Which kind of leaves us with this one big thought to chew on. As the big vendors keep consolidating and those licensing costs just continue their relentless climb upwards, is this the future of IT? A future where the most important decisions aren't made by salespeople, but by engineers on the front lines choosing their tools based on one simple metric. They just work. Maybe the future of the data center looks a lot less like a sales deck and a lot more like a command line.